This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, we're, this lecture is going to work through Chapter 1 of the paper, F5 lecture notes on activity-based costing. Now, because it's the, uh, the first in the series of lectures, um, two things. One is make sure you've um, watched my introductory lecture. Uh, going through um, an outline of the syllabus, the style of the exam, and how to go about using the intuition. And also make sure you've downloaded the uh, free lecture notes, because um, you'll see as I go through each of the uh, chapters, I'll work through uh, the examples, and I'll explain and expand on the lecture notes, so you really do need them in front of you. OK, well, I hope you have got them. And the, the first chapter, as it says, uh, is activity-based costing. Uh, and the first page, well, you see, this also is going to happen a lot as we go through the later chapters. Uh, the first page does explain briefly how we go about doing activity-based costing and what it is. But to read that to you, word for word, would be stupid. I'm going to explain by way of example. So if you turn to the second page, there's an example there, example one. I'll use this to explain what we're doing and how we do it. And then when you have finished um, the whole lecture, go back and read the first page yourself and check it agrees with what you thought I said. So let's have a look at, at example one. Uh, Una manufactures three products, A, B and C. Data for the period just ended is as follows. And we've got various information there, which we'll look at in detail when we need it. But the number of units produced of each product, the selling price, the material cost, the labour hours. And then mentioned below um, something about overheads. You see a list of four there and a total of 190,000. And then something I've got to explain later, obviously, this cost driver data. However, what does the question ask? Part A says calculate the cost and hence profit per unit, absorbing all the overheads on the basis of labour hours. Now let me explain what it is we're trying to do. And this part A, in fact, isn't activity-based costing at all. We'll come on to that in part B. But part A, given that information, the question, we want to work out a cost per unit for each of the three products, A, B and C. And if we know the cost per unit, then obviously we can work out, um, not only the selling price, we can work out what the profit per unit is, no problem. Now, as I say, this isn't, part A, this isn't activity-based costing. It's actually a revision of um, paper F2, or whatever exempted you from it. Uh, but let me show you what I mean. We want the cost per unit, so let's set up cost cards. Three products, A, B, and C. And what information are we given? Well, in that table at the top, we know what the material cost per unit is. That's easy. The materials, five for A, 10 for B, 10 for C. Uh, in addition, uh, there's labor. Uh, they told us the hours per unit, but below we told it's five dollars per hour. So for A, two dollars, uh, sorry, two hours at five dollars is ten. For B and C, one hour at five dollars is five. So, so far, nice and easy. Uh, but if we want the full cost per unit, we also need to bring in overheads. And how are we going to decide on the overheads per unit? Uh, we know what the total overheads are. For the minute, forget that breakdown, I'll explain the relevance later. But it says the overheads for the period in total are 190,000. But we want to absorb it, we want to charge it to the units. How much per unit of A, how much for B, how much for C? And the question says, if you look back at part A, Calculate the cost unit absorbing all the overheads on the basis of labour hours. 
well, as I say, this should be revision of paper um, F2. I've left a bit of space here that I can do uh, workings. What we're going to do is follow the instructions. We're going to work out um, what the overheads are effectively costing us per hour. And if we know the overhead cost per hour, then we can get a cost per unit. So, what do we know? We know what the total overheads are, obviously. 190,000. Uh, if I want to know a cost per hour, we need to know the total hours we're going to work. And how many hours are we going to work? Well, uh, we're making three products. So product A, we're making 20,000 units. Each one takes two hours. And so a total of 40,000 hours making A. In a similar way, B, we're making 25,000 units. Each one takes one hour. So 25,000 hours. And finally, C, 2,000 units. That's one hour, 2,000. And so in total, whoops, we're working 67,500. How on earth have I got that? Sorry, 67,000 hours. And so now we say, well, um, what's the cost per hour? So the cost per hour or the overhead absorption rate. Hundred and ninety thousand the total overheads divided by sixty seven thousand the total hours. Uh, and if I can find my calculator, that comes to two dollars eighty four per hour. Uh, when you're doing unit costs, don't worry too much about rounding, but normally. The unit costs go to the nearest cent. However, having worked out that the overheads are costing us 284 an hour, now we can finish off the cost cards. And at 284 per hour, well, product A takes two hours a unit. At 284 is a total of 568. Uh, products B and C only take one hour. So 284 is 284 a unit. And now we've got it. Uh, the total cost $20.68, uh, $17.84, and again $17.84. Obviously, in the exam, only do what's required is the unwanted cost. There we are. Here it does also say, what is the profit per unit? Well, we know what the selling price is. In each case, it's 20. And therefore, the profit per unit. A, 20, less 20 A is actually making a loss of 68 cents per unit, whereas B and C uh, are both making a profit of, what does it come to, $2.16. And there we are. So I don't think that's terribly difficult. Uh, as I said, well, it should actually be very easy because it is paper F2, part A. Um, as I said, you may be just asked to work out the cost. Obviously, you may use the cost to calculate a selling price, add on a percentage or something. We'll talk about, about pricing in a later lecture. But here, uh, we know the profitability of each unit. And of course, it does seem that A is a problem. B and C fine are making profits. A appears to be loss making. And so maybe we need to examine it, maybe we should try and put the price up or cut costs or even perhaps consider not making A at all. But again, A does appear to be the problem. 
Now, that's what you might call the traditional way of costing. Again, that's what we did in paper F2. But, although we've absorbed the overheads, we've taken no account of what the overheads actually relate to. If you look back at the question, overheads are 190,000 true, but some of them are relating to setting up the machine, some of them are related to receiving uh, materials, some of them to dispatching, to delivering, and some of them for machining. The, there are different types of overheads that are involved. And so what we're going to do for part B, which is the more important bit, we're going to um, absorb these overheads, certainly, but we're going to do it in perhaps a better way by instead of just taking total overheads divided by hours, which is just a bit of arithmetic, we're going to look at each bit of the overhead separately and decide what the most sensible way would be of absorbing them. So think about what I've just said. Check you are happy with the uh, part A, uh, traditional absorption costing. But we'll have a quick break, but in the next lecture, I'll do the same example all over again, but we'll use activity-based costing.